Okay guys, welcome to the Pulse Shift News. I think you're going to enjoy this video. We're going to go over a few facts just to clarify a few things because there's a lot of people out there that are very mixed up and don't know what is what from the truth to a lie. So let's establish some facts. And before we do, as always, let's thank those guardians of the galaxy that support our, un our um, observatory, the Mavstar Observatory. Uh, big thanks to you guys. Okay, so let's look at the first fact. Right, what we focus on on our observatory, our website, and our YouTube channel mainly is the magnetic north pole and the south pole, more recently, uh, migrating. It is migrating. It has migrated already in the last 100 years over 1,500 miles, and it is racing towards that theoretical mark of 40 degrees. And you guys have seen the experiment I did with a magnet Hopefully I'll be able to find a quick clip of that a bit later on and just show you that again. What happens at 40 degrees? The poles come from the uh, strong field lines and into the weak field lines. And when they move into those weak field lines, they migrate much quicker. That's what we expect to see in another 300 miles of traveling. Now, the other thing to note here is the intensity over Canada or the Canadian pole, because the Earth does have two magnetic poles at current time over the northern hemisphere and two at the bottom and we refer to these a lot on this channel as high intensity regions. Right now our sensors with the TriMag uh, and your compasses all point in between those two magnets and when one of these magnets or high intensity regions doesn't matter I'll show you the experiment again where I've got the two magnets and I'll pull the one away what happens to the needle it transfers over to the one on the right. In this case the magnetic north pole would migrate much quicker over to Siberia and the Canadian pole would dissipate or disperse or shrink and reduce to nothing and we can see that happening and we've been watching this happen in a very short space of time now. The intensity in the region of Canada is shrinking away at an alarming rate and we predict we could be in that reversal stage between five and seven years guys, can you believe that? So the fact is the poles on this planet are definitely migrating. Now, let's ask the question, the real big question, is it gonna be a complete reversal? Nobody can know that, absolutely nobody. You know, the Earth in the last 788,000 years has gone through a lot of failed reversals. So are we there at one again? I think the chances are very, very slim. It will be a failed reversal. And that is because the magnetic poles before 780,000 years ago went through a complete reversal on or around about every 350,000 years. That means we are over a half a million years overdue, a full reversal. And it's, that's why I say we're going through the full reversal now because it is well, well, well overdue. And if we don't go through a full reversal, we're probably even in bigger trouble because that could mean that something is stored within the core of our planet, which generates what is theoretically known as the magneto, which generates the poles on our planet and in turn gives us our magnetosphere. So if whatever is stored in our planet and that is what's led to that 500, year, uh, 500 million years delay, it could mean that we are going into a collapse of our magnetosphere and the poles might not reverse. We could go through what exactly our neighboring planet did, Mars, in losing its magnetosphere. When that happens, we get a term called sputtering. That's a stripping off of the atmosphere and we can see by studying Mars that there was uh, water, plenty of water on the, uh, on the surface of Mars. We can see by looking at that terraform, those little veins where the rivers were, similar to when we look from a satellite back down at Earth. We can see, you know, in the uh, dry seasons, these riverbeds in the exact same format as what we'd see on Mars. So we know at some point Mars did have a magnetic uh, field which was strong enough to generate perhaps a magnetosphere which protected its water. Now some people say you'll never boil off the amount of water on Earth. Probably it was said about Mars and it happened. And we know it had a magnetosphere because if you study the impact craters with satellites as they pass over it, they detect 
the recent impact craters detect a magnetic field there in that in that crater. So at one point, uh, where the fresh craters are, there was magnetic intensities being picked up by the magnetometers on board those spacecraft that was flying around the uh, surface of Mars. So we know it had a magnetosphere that protected its water, and that's why, you know. I'm so um, dedicated to this, guys, because the risks are super, super high. 500 million years overdue a magnetic reversal. And for some reason, it's still a, it still is going through it. And it's doing so in our, in our space of time, guys. It's happening in, in, within the last 100 years. And the chances are very high that it will go through its reversal in the next five to seven years based on the reduction of that intensity of Canada. So that's one fact, guys. Now in this video clip I'm about to show you, you can see I've got a compass and you can see that the needle is pointing in between the two stacks of Nibidium magnets. Those stacks, the one on the left represents our Canadian North Pole and the one on the right represents our Siberian Pole. And we know that the one on the left is dissipating and has been doing so over a rapid amount of time, probably seven to 10 years. And we've probably got left five to seven years before it dissipates completely. Now, I think this is a theoretical, uh, plausible experiment, what I'm showing you here, guys. You know, we are seeing a dissipation of the Canadian play, uh, pole, and we're also seeing a drift of the needle to, of our compasses and our sensors going towards Siberia. So I think when I do this experiment, I think it's a good replication of what is taking place and a good visualization. So let's start the video. Here we go. So first of all, I just bring the magnet, um, I mean the compass around the two magnets so that you can see that they, it always points in between the two, like I was describing, like our sensors. See how the, how the compass is pointing in between the two? But if you bring the compass quite on top of the, say in our case, uh, the Siberian one, it draws to it. But when you're in between the two, the compass needle is pointing exactly in between the two poles. So what we're just about to go through here, we're just talking, let me see if I can get to the point in this video where I actually draw that magnet away. Uh, just bear with me guys. Oh, you know, I can't land it on the spot. But trust me, when I move that one magnet away, uh, you can go back um, and have a look at this video. It's in the, in the list of videos that we've got. It isn't that far down the list either you can see the magnet when it's moved that the compass needle will go straight over towards the Siberian one. It's common sense really. But it's a good demonstration of a theoretical, uh, plausible um, theory, I think. Which has to do with our jet streams and that is that they are no longer in the positions that they was always remembered to be in. And that is in, you know, uh, the subtropical in the 30 degrees region over the northern and southern hemisphere and the polar jet streams in the 60 degree region over the northern and hem uh, southern hemispheres. They're no longer there. We don't have normal jet streams anymore. And this is, is a massive thing. Another thing that's not being talked about so much has been in the 80s and 90s and maybe a little bit into this 2000s, but very rarely you hear it talked about now, and that's the ozone hole. And that's a bit of a strange one, guys, and I'll tell you why that is. Because the ozone hole is made up with aerosols. And, you know, there are scientists now doing research in the field of aerosols attaching themselves to cosmic particles, and in turn creating larger particles which form or called now, uh, cloud nuclei and you know what it allows cloud nuclei to do on these particles is precipitate on it and when you get that you get more water into the atmosphere now the strange thing what's going on 
over the Antarctic region at the moment is you know during colder temperatures the ozone hole gets bigger but for some reason it hasn't it's got smaller now we know the magnetosphere is weakened and that has allowed a lot more cosmic radiation in and over the last 33 years we've seen three solar cycles you know constantly decline down to where we are now in solar cycle 24 it could mean that we're not going to see a start to solar cycle 25 in fact the scientific organizations aren't sure whether we're still in um, you know solar cycle 24 or we are actually starting in solar cycle 25 they bewildered even though they're the ones that teach you can tell where we are with the position of sunspots if they're closer towards 60 degrees we're in a solar maximum if they're closer and less of them and they're more equatorial we're in a solar minimum now if I know that and other solar physicists know that why are they saying they don't know exactly where we are it's a strange one it really is because I've seen at 40 degrees um, you know sunspots and that was close uh, to the end of solar cycle 24 so something's very strange going on probably with all our solar system right now guys and maybe they know about it maybe they don't but the facts that are coming out are confusing people you know people are saying it's global warming and we need to cut carbon but carbon is increasing but temperatures are decreasing you know the thing that we did notice back when we looked in time around the Maunder minimum was that when sunspots dropped off we we had an air, uh, area of time classified as the little ice age when the sunspots picked back up temperatures picked back up and then they went down again during the morning the minimum and the Dalton minimum and you know if that's not a good indication that you know the sun as we should already expect drives the climate on the earth then I don't know what is but what I can say guys from what I'm hearing on the internet on YouTube is confusing a lot of people and they don't know where they stand they're saying is it a reversal isn't it a reversal is it likely to be a reversal a full reversal or you know is it going to be a failed reversal you know I think the facts need to be explained to people so that they know but the big big point about all these anomalies that are taking place right now is that they are uh, severe enough to warrant people prepping and you know we're going to have a great conversation uh, with Andy from Andology on YouTube um, you know if you haven't subscribed to him subscribe to him he's, he's an interesting guy he's a real uh, technical whiz on a lot of things you're going to enjoy uh, our little podcast interview um, at some point this week we're also guys going to be getting in touch with a few of the our uh, guardians of the galaxy who have taken it upon themselves to put our magnetometers in their homes in them hot zones that we, where we wanted them to measure the intensity over Australia and the intensity over the United States and Andy's going to be working with us uh, not only to build the Mark II but to see if we can uh, battle our way through uh, you know decoding the uh, IED um, for the sorry the addresses for these new chips that we've got if we can do that we haven't got to worry about them old ones anymore I'm pretty sure Andy's at that level he can do it and I think he, he's you know more than willing to help us um, you know he understands a lot about the pole shift he's been following my channel for quite some time and uh, you know we've been we've known each other now perhaps through YouTube probably about seven years so guys you're going to enjoy the conversation we both talk very fluent about these topics and um, you know I think if I was sitting in a room with two guys that was well clued up on these topics it would be an interesting evening you know it might be worth you getting a couple of bottles of beer or maybe a glass of wine and just sitting there and uh, we'll get the videos rolling and uh, we'll do these interviews but more importantly before I forget I'm going to be in touch with uh, our guardians who are looking after our magnetometers and they've nearly completed that first week's recording of data and it really was just the test to get things going and uh, you know after that point we'll set them up then for a month and we'll let them do that do their job you know
or almost all the hard work is done and out of the way and it is just really now collecting the data which is still time consuming you know these guys have got to take a little bit of time out of their time to do it so you know you can say big thanks to you guys in the comment section that would be you know I think that would be great and um, uh, what else was I going to say you know we're still we're still trying to get them uh, in China and Russia at the moment and you know we've had a few people also um, offer to have them um, elsewhere like we can target uh, the central region of the Canadian pole from um, Diamond at the Obanana Ranch's um, uh, property he's offered to have one over there and uh, David Vine uh, asked recently about one from um, Adapt 2030 so you know we're getting a lot of people all come together on this topic and uh, it's getting really interesting guys it really is so you know stay with us um, keep supporting what we do I know I know it gets annoying me always saying can you support the observatory but you know when you look at um, that recent development that I think uh, Japan has just done with the uh, cosmic detector facility they had 40 billion pounds to spend on it guys we've managed to do that we've less than I don't know, seven thousand pounds. You know, we've put magnetometers on the hot spots of the high intensity regions and we're tracking from the UK with our TriMag system as well as monitoring the magnetosphere with all that money. It's not a lot of money in the you know, in the world of development and research. It really is a drop in the ocean, but we have managed to do some really uh, epic things with it because simply, you know, we didn't have a programmer. I, I, I became that guy. I put the programmer's hat on. Uh, we didn't have an uh, electronics design engineer again. I had to put that hat on. And, you know, it's it's been like that. You know, I've had to adapt to do a lot of these different roles. And it's only through doing it all pretty much myself that we've saved, you know, hundreds of thousands of pounds in development and um, research before, you know, we even got to build. You know, and then there was the programming. And you can imagine all these people, big salaries. Uh, we've done it on a shoestring you know that's what I think you guys um, know me for you know I, I'll have a go like you know with the oxygen uh, measuring of, in the atmosphere you know we find a way of doing it always on the um, budget but we get good results and that's the main thing and uh, you know I'm quite I'm really proud of the people that have supported the channel and you know at where we are with everything you know, I think we've done you know uh, I couldn't wish for any more um, perhaps there's a few more things I'd like to add in the future to our observatory and uh, you know maybe there'll be an opportunity to do that uh, one of the projects uh, we've still got to come is the cosmic ray uh, cloud generator uh, that will be finished this year I just want to make sure these magnetometers are up and running then we can switch back over to that and then once we've got the cosmic ray done we're going to get on with our uh, CO2 50 watt laser um, transmitter and uh, you know you guys that have supported us on Patreon are going to get an opportunity to put a message uh, in a recording and I'm going to fire that out into deep space for you and it will pass Voyager 1 and 2 you see guys this is what you can do on a budget you know we'll, we'll be sending a message at the speed of light past Voyager 1 and 2 and it'll be your personal message and that's just to say guys thanks you know for helping us out you know with um, supporting the channel so, you know, I'm not going to go on. Um, I just wanted to establish a few facts because there is a bit of confusion out there. You know, with global warming, global cooling, you know, is the poles moving? And what's all these theories based on? I hope I've clarified a little bit for you guys. So, you know, the only thing left to say is that what I usually do, and I hope I don't annoy you guys for asking is, you know, can you support what we do? Uh, the PayPal link's there. And, you know, if you want to, you know, if it's not for you, PayPal, we've got the patron. And, you know, guys, for you guys that have supported us and continue to support us, you know, a huge, huge thank, thank you. And I'm pretty sure, you know, there's a lot of people that if there was in the if, if there was in the position to do so, they would have. And I guess that they would thank you as well. So, guys, have an amazing evening and I will speak to you hopefully tomorrow or the next day and we'll crack on. So, as always, bye for now.